Bonjour Booktube, uh, bienvenue en Book Time with Elvis, avec moi, Marc. I hope that's right, it's been a long time since I've done any French. Uh, so today is Tag Tuesday and I have a tag for you. I was tagged in the Booktube Paris tag by Alan from Big Hard Books and Classics and the tag is originally created by Jim at Jim's Books Reading and Stuff and of course I will leave all relevant links below. Let's crack on. So, the prompts. Uh, number one, what was the last book you read set in Paris? Um, I couldn't remember the last book I read that was set in Paris, uh, but I went with two books uh, because uh, one, they at least passed through Paris, and the other uh, part, big part of it is set in Paris. So the first one is Beaugest, uh, which is uh, the story of three brothers uh, who independently join uh, the French Foreign Legion uh, in the period before the First World War, uh, owing to some kind of scandal regarding uh, jewel theft, jewelry theft. And uh, the um, they they well, the, the main character ends up uh, going to Paris, uh, trying to enlist in the uh, in in the French Foreign Legion. So uh, Paris certainly features a little bit in that book. And then I think the book that I read, uh, it was not as recently, but it still wasn't that long ago, was uh, actually a French book called The President's Hat by Antoine Lorraine. And uh, this is a rather charming story uh, about a man who goes for dinner in a restaurant and the uh, French president at the time, at the time it's set, uh, Francois Mitterrand is, uh, is uh, sitting in the next booth and when he leaves, he leaves behind uh, his hat and the man takes the hat and it changes his life. He uh, becomes very successful, he gets promotion at work. Uh, then he loses the hat and somebody else picks it up and it changes their life and the hat kind of uh, goes around like this, uh, causing mm, positive changes in people's lives. It's a very fun book, very short book. I would uh, recommend that as well, of course, as I would recommend uh, Beau Geste by P.C. Uh, Wren. Uh, number two, what words can't be translated into English? Uh, well, I was trying to think uh, of some French phrases. Uh, I had to use Google to help me because I'd heard, some, uh, heard these before but couldn't remember the exact, uh, the exact way of saying them. So I've actually gone for three French phrases and then for a bit of fun I've thrown in three uh, Czech phrases as well. Uh, the first Czech phrase I think which is difficult to translate into English is uh, passer du coq à l'an which is literally something like move from to move from the rooster to the donkey and I suppose if we were to translate it it's something like change the subject to change the subject something like that uh, the next one is uh, avoir la pêche or to have the peach and this means uh, you would use this to describe somebody who is in uh, great form you know, who's really shining uh, on that particular day. And then I think the other one's pretty simple, uh, and it's uh, voila. And, of course, we would translate into English as there you have it. So it's nice how the French have just like one word, voila, voila. And uh, we have to say there you have it. And regarding the Czech ones, I could have done uh, a whole series of videos on untranslatable Czech phrases. Uh, and words uh, because they seem to be able to just conjure up words where we need like three, four, five words or, or a whole phrase to describe something or say something, they can actually use one word. So the three I've chosen, the first is uh, Fiflena, Fiflena, which uh, if we are to translate it, it translates as a woman who is obsessed with clothes. So you see, we have to say that in English, right? And they can just say Fiflena and it means a woman who is obsessed with clothes. Uh, the next one is uh, Knedlikovi, Knedlikovi, I should say, it's long, long uh, E on the end, uh, or Y actually, uh, and this uh, means to be rather partial to dumplings. So you see we have to say in English, rather partial to dumplings, and they can just say Knedlikovi, yeah. And then one I really like, um, which we don't have in English, is uh, Vibafnote, Vibafnote. And um, it, it is one word that describes the action of jumping out and saying boo to somebody. Um, and uh, the Czechs don't say boo, they say buff. 
which doesn't sound as I mean boo of course doesn't sound particularly scary but it could be more scary perhaps or scarier rather than uh, buff but uh, yeah so the buff note to jump out and say boo to people so it's kind of cool but as I said I could have made a whole series of videos on check ones uh, if you want to see that <laughs> let me know perhaps I will uh, okay number three do you have a favorite book in translation uh, yes I think my favorite book would be uh, go for classic work and it would be The Count of Monte Cristo uh, by Alexandre Dumas uh, fantastic uh, book I did a video on it recently uh, in my series Beyond the Book I think it's episode uh, one so feel free to check it out if you want it's kind of interesting and I'm not just saying that because I did it but uh, you know when I researched it and the story behind the book and the, 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 tr the true story behind it uh, it was it was really kind of interesting um, number four have you read books in other languages I have uh, although strangely the one of them is an English book that was translated into German and that was Matilda by Roald Dahl and I've read a Czech book um, again not a money one but a book from the Czech Republic uh, which is called uh, Kartek a Kalhotki and it's like Kertek is a little uh, famous character here. He's like a little mole, um, and uh, Karl Hotke are like trousers. So it's like the mole and the trousers. Uh, but it's a kids' picture book. I mean, I, I don't even remember if there are really words in it. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I gave it a go. Uh, next, number five. Uh, Jules Verne studied at law school in Paris. Do you have a favorite book by Jules Verne? Yes, I do. Um, I think, I mean, I like a lot of uh, Jules, Verne, Jules Verne's uh, works, but my favorite, and I think it's partly because it's one of the few books that has a really, uh, of it from him, that has a really excellent uh, translation, is Around the World in 80 Days. Uh, and I think uh, it's a shame because, you know, uh, you know, Jules Verne was French, and I don't think, um, oh, see, the window's open and flies get in because um, it's really hot of course like in a lot of Europe uh, I think yeah the translations of a lot of his works aren't very good uh, and yet the book where the hero or main character happens to be an Englishman ends up having quite a good English translation so you know go figure uh, number six do you have a favorite film uh, oh well sorry uh, Jim's written movie Jim's all for uh, if you can't beat them, join them, I guess, and and and, uh, and using American English because I guess he interacts a lot with Americans. Uh, I take the opposite approach. I want to try and convert you guys into speaking English properly. <laughs> so uh, no, I'm only I'm only kidding. Uh, do you have a favorite f movie set in Paris? Yes, I do. I probably have quite a few, but the one that really sticks out to me is uh, Amelie. Uh, starring Audrey Tattoo, which is a fantastic uh, film. I'm sure everybody's seen it. Uh, it was a real sensation when it uh, when it appeared, and uh, you know, to be honest, I wouldn't mind watching it again. Number seven. Do you have a favorite French car? Yes, I do. I really like uh, uh, the Citroen, the Citroen de Chevaux, uh, the uh, two horse Citroen, the the one. Uh, well, I guess it's kind of almost a stereotypical uh, French village or French town. Uh, car, um, yeah. So the Dershavo would be my favourite French car. Not practically. I don't think I would find it very easy to to fit in it very comfortably, but uh, it does kind of look cool. And it's one of those things that you know, if you live in France and you have a little farmhouse or chateau, you want to kind of roll around in an ancient uh, Dershavo. Uh, number eight. Have you been to Paris? And when was the last time you visited Paris? Honestly, I can't remember. I know that sounds awful. I've been to Paris several times. Um, you know, I'm from the south of England, and so, for example, it's cl it was closer for me to visit Paris than it was to visit Edinburgh or even some places in the north of England. Um, I've been uh, with school, with uh, university. I've been with friends. I've been uh, with uh, partners. I've been uh, on my own, actually, as well. Um, I think the last time I was in Paris, specifically to go to Paris, would be in uh, 2006. I have a very uh, mixed 
And I have very mixed feelings about Paris. I think it's, of course, a fantastically beautiful city. Uh, you know, with Baron Haussmann's, you know, fantastic architecture, the way it's all laid out and ordered. Uh, but I have to say my experiences of Paris are incredibly mixed. You know, I go from hating the city to loving the city, hating the city to loving the city. So each time I've been, uh, it's been either extremely negative or extremely positive. Luckily, I think the last time was positive. So my last impression of it uh, is a good one. But, you know, I've been there where friends of mine were robbed. Uh, I've been there where we've seen uh, murder victims or dead bodies on the, uh, on the, on the metro. Um, you know, but I've also been there when there's been, you know, fan fantastic um, uh, New Year's Eve party on the Champs Elysees. Uh, I've been there, you know, with great friends and had amazing food. So, you know, different times have called for different experiences. Uh, next, do you have a favorite French pa painter or painting set in Paris? I'll go with the painter. Um, I guess a French painter, uh, and it would be uh, Paul Gauguin. Um, I once saw a documentary on him when I was uh, my mid-teenage years, I think, and it was fascinating, uh, extremely interesting, and I became hooked on him, and I, I think he's a fantastic uh, artist. He had a really interesting life. Uh, don't get me wrong, I love a lot of French painters, but particularly I do enjoy uh, the Impressionists, um, whether it be you know Monet, Manet, uh, whoever, but uh, yeah, I do, I do, I do have a particular fondness for Paul Gauguin. And number ten, do you have a favorite French writer? Uh, yeah, I mean, I really like Jules Verne, but I think uh, I'm going to stick with the classics on this. Probably, I can't, I can't think of too many modern ones. I do like that Antoine Lorraine who wrote The President's Hat. I've got a few of his books. Um, and I, no one else really jumped out at me, but I, I will go with uh, Alexandre Dumas. Perhaps it could be Victor Hugo, but I haven't read any Victor Hugo. I do plan to read uh, The Hunchback of Notre Dame at least, uh, hopefully some point in the summer, but I do have quite a lot on. Uh, but yeah, I'm going with Alexandre uh, Dumas as my uh, favorite French writer. Um, there's nothing here about tagging people. I'm not. I'm not really sure because uh, Alan did it the other day, uh, but Jim made this three months ago, and I know Jim's tags are really popular and they get thrown about a bit. So I would imagine most people that I would tag have probably already done it. So I'm sorry, uh, Jim, if it seems like a cop out, and Alan, if it seems like a cop out. But I am actually going to just leave it open and say, if you want to do it, it's a fantastic tag. Please do it uh, if you haven't already. So thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. See you next time. Bye from Elvis and I. Au revoir. For a bientôt. <laughs> Bye. Better, 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 better